Hello YouTube and welcome to today's episode of The Shredding Skeptic. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at front wheel drive versus rear wheel drive, a quick look at telemetry, and a shout out. So we're starting off today in the front wheel drive Renault Megane, and on the top screen you can see that we are incorporating a little bit of telemetry for you guys to see today. In the top center we have a breakdown of where my pedals are positioned represented by a red, yellow, and green bar. So you can see the uh, green bar going up and down there. That's basically where my foot is on the throttle right there, so you guys can get a better idea of what exactly it is that I'm doing to get these cars around the corner. On the top right we have our g-force meter and we also have up towards the left our rpms and speed now uh, that line that's off on the far left i do believe that is to do with something to do with the air fuel mixture uh, i haven't quite worked that one out yet and off to the sides on the left and right you're going to have a breakdown of where your weight distribution is loading so the bigger that yellow orangey circle thing gets that's mostly where your tires are going to be loaded onto there is also a line that points out uh, from that center square there that's going to give you a direction of what direction the force of your traction is going in. So it should give you a better idea if you're coming into a turn too fast or something like that. On the inside of the green squares we also see our brake temperature. So if you notice that your brakes are getting a little bit too hot throughout the race, I believe you can also open up some of these uh, vents on the front of some of these cars in order to cool the brakes a little faster at the expense of top speed. These squares are also going to give you an idea of your tire condition in terms of uh, how long they're going to last and what the temperature is at right now. And I think they're also going to show you uh, specifically on that square what part of your tire is getting hotter or colder. So if you actually have a heavy camber on your tires, you're going to see the inside of those heating up a lot faster. On the outside of the squares, you can also see these uh, moving numbers that represent the travel of your suspension. So you're going to have an idea of how much it's dipping in the corners and maybe make some adjustments next time you go around the track. In addition to most of the suspension tweaks you'd be familiar with from, say, Gran Turismo 6, you're also going to have a lot more fine control over things like tire pressure. So if you find that you're maybe getting uh, a little bit too much oversteer or understeer, you can adjust the pressure of your tires accordingly if you want to have maybe the back end slide a little bit more and make sure that front end grips right in. As I make my way up the straight here, you'll notice up on the telemetry screen, I keep my gas foot hard down and then just use my clutch foot to uh, bang between the gears, especially if you don't want to have any sort of lag and it'll also keep that turbo boost up for you. One interesting feature I did notice with the Renault Megane was that if you were to come into a turn quite quickly and you put it down into second, it doesn't seem to engage the gear until you come off the brakes a little bit. I'm not really sure if that's a design specific to the Megane or if that's going to be featured in more front wheel drive cars. I guess the idea with that is that they don't want to have you totally blow out your gearbox if you happen to downshift too quickly. As I mentioned in the uh, earlier karting video, with rear wheel drive cars specifically, if you were to downshift too quickly, you can often find your back wheels locking up. Now, uh, here this BMW is going to try to overtake me on the inside, and uh, I'm going to try to do my best to stick it through the outside of this turn. This is about the point in the race where that guy who's been following you the entire time is finally going to jump ahead and just be absolutely merciless trying to get to the end of that uh, track before you. So uh, I tried to get him on the inside here and force him into that wall, but he ended up just shoving me off the outside. So again, this is not the funeral procession you're used to from Gran Turismo. These guys are aggressive and they will stop at nothing to win these races. Just before we jump into the rear wheel drive section, I just wanted to take a moment and do a quick shout out to BC from Alloy7. This channel has been very influential in getting me up and running on YouTube. The stated purpose of BC's channel is to build a stronger gaming community, and that's something I definitely want to be part of, although I could use a little bit more clarification as to exactly how we're going to go about achieving those objectives. BC's most influential video series for me personally was the three pillars of a great gaming channel, including value, distinction, and consistency. These videos helped me lock down exactly what it is I wanted to present to the audience and how. So again, if you guys haven't checked out Alloy7's channel, I would definitely recommend you hop over there. I'll leave a link in the video description. So BC, thanks again for all of the help you've given me getting up and running on YouTube, and I look forward to talking to you further about what it is that we can do as video creators to help the gaming community. So here we are back at Brant's Hatch, and this time we're going to be taking it around in a rear-wheel drive, well, they call them Ruff, and I think Ruff is a uh, company that takes a Porsche chassis and basically modifies them until they're not really a Porsche anymore. Now, I'm just going to call this thing a Porsche from now on, and the reason they're not called this in games, from what I understand, is that Electronic Arts actually has a deal with Porsche so that Porsches can only appear in EA games. Now, uh, that kind of sucks for the rest of us out there, but uh, this thing looks like a Porsche and it drives like a Porsche. So, you know, it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it drives like a duck too. 
So the competitors that we're facing in this race include uh, vehicles such as the Audi R8 as well as the BAC Mono. Now, a lot of these guys are going to have an advantage in either lightness or in power, and this Porsche seems to come in uh, somewhere in the middle. But again, this is uh, still a very, very difficult race to pull off, and I wasn't as successful as I would have liked to be. So as we can see here, I can just get the legs on him out in front of the BAC Mono and whatever that other car was. And come down to the straight here, unfortunately these guys usually are able to get a little bit faster through the corners because their cars tend to be a little bit lighter, so you're probably going to have to beat them under braking. So coming up ahead we have a bit of a change in elevation, so you're going to have to compensate by being a little bit more gentle and careful under braking. For this corner you can go down to second, but I found that once my tires were warm enough, staying in third seemed to be okay, but uh, right up to fourth, hard on the brakes, down to second for here, and uh, try not to downshift too quickly or you're going to lock up the back end and just spin right out. On this particular track I was barely able to get it out of fourth, and you're never really going to get top speed here, so I might go and try this again, maybe tighten up the gear ratios a little bit so I can use more of that engine power if I'm never even going to be getting into the top speeds anyway. Now the first time I did this race it was just coming down with rain and I couldn't see anything and I was barely able to move up two positions so what I would suggest uh, if you're really having troubles with the rain if you actually exit the race and come back at a later time the weather seems to be randomly generated at the start but once it's been selected it seems to stay fairly consistent so I mean if uh, you leave restarts enabled and you're able to tell that okay well by you know lap three that's when the rain starts then you can adjust your pit strategy accordingly and maybe throw on some stickier tires Today I'm actually using, I think it was the Summer UHP Extremes, so I don't really know if those are the rain tires, they just seem to have brand names and don't actually tell you what they do, so it's kind of a bit of guesswork and you have to feel your way around and see what's, you know, grippier than, than what. So in other channel news, I just wanted to give everyone an update on day 31 as of filming this particular video for where we stand so far. It looks like in this first month I've accumulated almost 500 minutes of people watching these videos, and that's spread out across about 23 different countries. So that in particular was quite surprising to me, uh, because I'm not really sure how people on the other side of the world are finding these videos. I mean, it seems to be through maybe just Google searches for a particular game, but again, that's going to be something I'm going to have to figure out uh, by looking at the analytics a little bit more carefully. But I just want to say how thankful I am that people are actually taking time out of their day to watch these videos. I mean, it feels great to be able to put something out there on the internet and then people will just watch it at their own leisure. So thank you everybody for sticking around so far and watching these videos, and I certainly hope to see you in the comments section, and let me know what kind of game footage that, uh, that interests you, so that hopefully I can tailor my channel a little bit to your needs. I've also condensed the uh, four most recently recorded songs into an EP that I've set as a separate playlist, so if you guys just want to hear the music and you're not really all that interested in watching any game footage, maybe you just want to throw it on in the background uh, and not burn through too much of your data, I only uploaded it at 360p because it's really just an image, uh, and if you guys are interested in taking a look at some of those, I would definitely appreciate any feedback you have to offer. I'd also like to make the YouTube shout-out a little bit more of a regular feature in my videos. So maybe every two or three videos, I'll have a little section in the middle with a shout-out for uh, one of the YouTube channels that's been a huge influence to me uh, over the years that I've been watching YouTube, and I'd love to share that with you guys because these guys are awesome. Another website that I began to contribute to is the Widescreen Gaming Forum. Now, Widescreen Gaming Forum features a lot of reviews and footage from all sorts of different titles with a feature on what it looks like on a triple wide display or a 21 by 9 or any of these just so you guys can have an idea of what these games might look like before you purchase them so what i would recommend is go over there and take a look through some of the forums see if there's any games you might like uh, before deciding whether or not it's one worth investing in so with those announcements out of the way let's jump right back into this rear wheel drive action and on my uh, right side there you can see what looks like a Mercedes McLaren SLS, I believe, uh, just trying to plow right past me on the grass. Now, if you're able to direct uh, your opponents over onto the grass, they're not going to have as much ability to put their power down as you are, and you're hopefully able to sneak ahead a little bit. Or you could just do what I like to call eight-wheel braking. I believe a lot of the penalties are adjustable, so if you just nudge a couple people, they're not going to ding you, but uh, they will definitely if you roll one tire off that track, that uh, will invalidate your lap time, and I believe if you straight up slam into people, they uh, will also disqualify you from the race. So I hope you enjoyed our little comparison between front and rear wheel drive, and I hope to see you in another episode of The Shredding Skeptic.